possibly an isolated tornado. That's going to be followed by a brief lull and then another round of very heavy rain, possibly some hail, strong wind, and then you get the third round in behind that. Now this is this line also has a tremendous amount of lightning in it. And just on this view right here, I am picking up, well, for whatever reason, it won't read out. Let's try that again. I'll pick it up from right here. Huh. Well, let's clear it out. See if we can make that happen. Oh, here we go. And let me go back to this with the lightning. We'll put the info on here and then Let's see if we can get a accurate lightning reading on that. 217 strikes of lightning. But right now we're on the air with you because we do have a tornado warning. That tornado warning is for northern Shelby County along and north of I-40. But you're likely hearing sirens all across the city in Shelby County right now. They're going off here in Midtown. The 240 loop included in this polygon, this tornado warned polygon, but that cell rapidly moving off to the east northeast and continuing to produce some very heavy rain. Looks like there may be a little something in there. Let's take a look at the scope and we will see if we can find any specific rotation or anything, any anomaly that may give us some concern. I think I see something right there. Let me zoom in just a little tighter. Spencer, follow up behind me on this because I'm looking at something that is just right there. 55. Let me pull this scope back. Spencer, take a look at 55 just south of right there at 55 and 240. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking at. 55 and 240. At. Yeah. So I hear it going off on my uh, phone right now. So 55 and 240, there is definitely some rotation right there. I'm going to go right down this the is, street level on this. This is near the uh, Liberty Bowl. Memorial Stadium. All right, so that is coming right into Midtown, right? You've got a better view on it. Let's go to yours. There we go. So this is Pearson Avenue. We have Boyle Avenue. And then that's Castalia. So that is right there around South Parkway and Castalia. If you are in that area, I want you to get to the lowest floor of your home right now, away from windows, put as many walls between you and the exterior as possible. Don't try to get a look at this. Let it pass. Spencer, you've got a very good look at it right now on the links. You want to talk more about it? Yeah, and uh, this is right over the Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium, and I'm actually looking at this. I have pointed, I just happened to point the camera, the Midtown High Five camera at this a second ago. Uh, if you can pull me back up, this is looking toward the circulation or uh, the wind that we're seeing, and the lightning is uh, pretty constant with this. You can see it's flashing, but the camera has been really blowing hard. So this is looking in that direction. Let's go back to the radar and let's show you what it looks like on the radar. And I'm going to put a track on this so that we can get a better. And they just issued a tornado warning for this, Ron. So we were we were already talking about this. So let me put a track on this real quick and show you the this is the circulation that I've circled. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and we'll say it's going what about 40 miles per hour. Yeah. And if weather we, service says it's well wait a minute let me give you an update on that because the weather service is saying that that is moving at about 50 miles per hour all right so let's at 50. let's go 50 miles per hour we're going to go out a little bit further here let me uh let me uh zoom back and pull out just a tad so this is including cordova high school and also uh, this is including the Berclair community. Here it is. This is going to be it right here. 50 miles per hour. We're going all the way out and these storms are just racing. Shelby Farms. This is knocking on the door right now. Oak Grove in nine minutes. Lakeland in 14. Garner Lake in 15 minutes. If I change this up a little bit, I can actually show you the uh, cities here and I'm going to show you a few more and we'll get uh, a better view of this as I zoom in. Uh, Mason Road, Macon Road, I-40. This is going to go right along I-40, Ron. So this is uh, this is going to be uh, impacting folks that are out driving right now. And I think we might have a developing tornado here. All right, so I want everyone inside the 240 loop to get to the lowest floor on your home. We've got a 
couple of areas that we're watching closely and one that will move through East Memphis right there along I-40. We've got another little area that's circulating that it's moving on through the Raleigh Frazier area as well. So there are two distinct areas of potential rotation that we're watching one right now. That's ejecting north and east very quickly. It's just to the southeast of the radar site in Millington. But as this other cell that's moving through the 240 loop that we're watching very closely at this time, let's put a track on that area of potential rotation within that tornado warning, which will last until 1245. Bartlett, it's three minutes away. It's six minutes from Ellendale, 10 minutes from Lakeland, 16 minutes from Arlington and 20 minutes from Galloway. There's your first alert to get to the safest place in your home. Lowest floor center location. Make sure you've got flashlights. Take along some form of take along your weather radio, your first alert weather app so that you can continue to get weather information. And by the way, should you lose power, you can follow us on your app right there on your phone or your tablet. We'll continue to stream right there so you can find us. And I'm sure many in the city will be losing are losing power now as we uh, as this heavier part of the storm moves on through. Now what is behind it is also severe, but I don't think it's tornadic. I think it will increase our flooding potential, but right now it is the potential for a tornado moving inside the 240 loop that has us concerned at this time. And as we zoom in and take a close look once again, here it is inside the loop that's right there inside East Memphis. Here we go. Let's look at this. It looks like it is in between Poplar and Summer. Let me pan down just a little bit here. That is the area that we're watching. This is where we see the potential tornado. I'm going to zoom in just a little tighter on this. Let's get you down to street level here in the city so you can see what we're dealing with, where that rotation is right now. And this is Graham Street right here. Then we have High, this is the uh, High Point Terrace area. So between High Point and Graham, it looks like we have a possible tornado on the ground or at least some very strong circulation in that area. And it is rotating rapidly right there, right in the heart of the 240 loop, right inside the city. This is near the University of Memphis area. This is Walnut Grove right here. We've got Graham here. This is Wallace, I do believe. Farther east is Perkins. But then this is moving off to the east northeast. So this is going to take this on into northeastern portion of the city inside the loop. And that will start to take that towards Gibbon and closer to Mendenhall within the next few minutes. So that is what we're looking at there. Spencer, you got some new info? Yeah, we've got another area of circulation that I'm watching closely in the Cordova area right now, and this is right around the Beaver Trail Drive area. This is a secondary area of rotation. If you go back just a couple of scans, I've been watching this area closely, and uh, what I'm seeing here is a poss possible rotation, maybe a secondary uh, brief spin up. So there's two areas. If we put this in motion over the past few minutes, you can see both of these areas. They do seem to be weakening right now, but uh, the, the, the story with this is we could have two at least potential uh, areas that is rotating and possibly on the ground in parts of Shelby County. And then we're still watching this area up to the north of that from Fraser to Millington. But I think the, the biggest threat is this area you've been talking about, Ron, uh, inside the 240 loop, now just exiting outside the 240 loop and also near uh, Cordova as well. So if you're really anywhere from Dexter Lane all the way back to the Burklair community, you need to be in your safe place and taking shelter until we give you the all clear. Ron? Spencer, did I see a little rotation around Germantown? Just pan there. Look at that. Yep. Is there a little, that what might is that? An, that might be another that might be another little area trying yeah. to develop there in uh, the Germantown. If area. you're in Germantown, go to your storm shelter right now. Lowest floor of your home center location. Get away from windows, away from exterior walls. We have a tornado emergency right now. We have a tornado warning in effect until 1245. 
We are seeing rotation on the radar. We have no visual confirmation, but keep in mind it is dark. There's a lot of rain. These tornadoes could be rain wrapped. We've already had a history of tornado producing storms tonight. And as a matter of fact, we've had three nursing homes in northeastern Arkansas that have been hit by tornadoes, and we've already had two confirmed fatalities tonight. I want you to take this very, very seriously. Two tornado warnings right now over Shelby County. Two active tornado warnings. A severe thunderstorm warning for the entire county stretches into Fayette County, northern DeSoto, and northern Marshall County with another severe thunderstorm warning coming in just behind that. But right now, inside the 240 loop, inside the city of Memphis, is where we're finding the greatest area of stronger storms at this time and a couple of areas that we are watching very, very closely. One that's in the Germantown area. Looks like it's right here. We've got another hook just to the north right there north of I-40 and all of this moving off to the northeast. So now this tornado warning, I think we have we still have the two warnings that are in place. So we have this warning. This is going to be in place now until 1230. So it is for Shelby County. That for Shelby County, there's another one that is just to the north of that, I do believe. And that is tornado warning also for Shelby County till 1245. So two different segments, one till 1230, another till 1245. That's why we hear the sirens going off tonight. Now let's make sure you are in the safest place in your home. Spencer and I are tracking this very, very carefully tonight. And we're going to keep you safe and ride you through it. So just stick with us. We'll let this move on through. Behind it, I think we're just going to be dealing with some heavy rain. In the meantime, we still have this active tornado warning working its way through. That's why the sirens are going off. Lightning is also another big issue for us tonight. And just within this tornado worn polygon, we're finding about 66 strikes of lightning. That's enough to take out power for many areas and we've even before the storms moved through many parts of the city had already lost power as a result of the strong gusting wind. Spencer, you're looking at the uh, Lanau area right now. You seen something else down there? I was just uh, I was just actually uh, talking with some folks and uh, we're getting some from some very, very uh, high wind reports from that area. You can see the lightning behind me here in Midtown right now. Uh, looks like uh, yeah, tree limbs are uh, definitely coming down. Some bigger ones in that area with the high winds. There may be uh, still some brief rotation and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm going back because this helps us figure out what these storms are doing right now. So if I go back in time, there's a couple of areas that I'm watching in rotation uh, in this uh, vicinity of really it started at Graceland and it's gone all the way up to the uh, Cordova area. So uh, that's the area where I've seen at least some rotation, possibly a tornado, another little area here in uh, Midtown that's been uh, moving to the north and east toward Lakeland as well. And as we zoom out, you can see there's kind of three different pieces of a tornado warning uh, in these same areas as of right now. Let me uh, go back and uh, do the latest uh, scan here of all of this. And it all looks a little bit messy right now because this is kind of a cluster of storms, but uh, we want you to stay weather alert, stay in your safe spot, and uh, be sure and just uh, get to the lowest floor. Make sure you have uh, plenty of uh, space between you and the outside walls. And if you have a storm shelter or if you have a basement, just go in there and, and sit tight until we give you the all clear. Again, these warnings go until 1245 AM. So still for another 30 minutes, these storms are moving quickly and could produce uh, more spin up tornadoes at any time. Right now, it looks a little bit more favorable to me than it did uh, a little bit ago. Uh, the uh, radar is not showing the signs it was uh, earlier, uh, just probably 10, 15 minutes ago, Ron, that uh, there is a rotation with this. But even if there's not, this is likely still some pretty strong straight line winds. Yeah, absolutely. And with this line coming through, we can get these quick spin ups rapidly. 
And, uh, you know, we were on the air just a few minutes ago and talked about how a severe thunderstorm warning can produce a tornado with little or no warning. I think we got a lesson in that tonight with this very system. That's that little area Spencer is circling right there north of Brunswick between Brunswick and Bolton. That's an indication of a little rotation or at the very least some strong wind associated with that. And as a matter of fact, let's go back and let me take a look at um, let's go to my radar if we can, Ladarius, and I want to show you spectrum width and what we're looking at is turbulence within the atmosphere and we're looking for areas of red and yellow orange. I don't see a lot right now around the Memphis Metro. That's good news, but that doesn't mean that we're out of the woods just yet. Let's put the scope back on and see if we can see any areas of potential rotation. And there are still a couple. It looks like we've got this little area right here. I'm going to zoom in just a little tighter on this hole in this corner. The eastern side or East Memphis, right around University of Memphis. This is Poplar Avenue right here. This is inside the 240 loop. Then we get a right around Bartlett and Lakeland. And that is where we're seeing some sort of broad scale rotation, I do believe. Or we may actually be seeing some straight line wind with this. That could be the issue there. But this area that's right here inside the 240 loop, very tough to detect right now. And I think for the most part, that is just primarily some broad scale rotation now is it does look like uh, it is showing some signs of weakening, but I got to tell you, there's still a lot of very heavy rain with this. Ladarius, can you pull up uh, the Midtown camera? Because it's coming down at close to two inches per hour. That's a look 200 feet up at the tower right here at 1960 Union Avenue. I think we're looking to the east. If we spun that around and look to the west, you'd probably find a much calmer or somewhat calmer pattern. But right now, all the activity is inside the 240 loop right here inside the city of Memphis and Shelby County tonight. Active tornado warning in place until 1245. Actually, two warnings, one until 1230, another until 1245. And that's why we're with you tonight. Now, we're also getting some indication of the potential for hail. That's Union Avenue looking to the west there on your TV screen. Let's take a look at the hail tracker because there's probably been some small, possibly large hail in there. This is showing hail at about an less than a half inch per size, just over a half an inch right there around southwestern, uh, south, southern part of the city of Memphis. But it's a severe thunderstorm warning and the tornado warning that we are on the air with you tonight. We're starting to see a little more of an inflow notch. Look at this little area right here. There's some very strong winds coming in out of the south. So that's feeding into that. And we can get these little notches, which can create some quick little spin ups in areas. But right now, all this moving on through. And as we put this into motion, you see it coming on through the Memphis Metro and notice these little areas in white here. The radar has been showing these tonight. I think it's having a tough time just interpreting what it's actually seeing. Let me zoom out a little bit and take a look at the big picture because this is all part of a much larger line that still has a ways to go before it makes its way through our coverage area and out of the mid south tonight and it extends all the way through West Tennessee still lingering back into eastern Arkansas, North Mississippi. Storms are coming in your direction, and it looks like you're going to be dealing with those as we get into the remainder of the overnight hours. But from now until about 3 a.m., 3 to 4 a.m., we're still under the threat of strong to severe storms in the Action News 5 coverage area. So that's why I want everybody to remain weather aware. This is not over by any stretch of the means just yet. And still heavier rain back to our west. I am encouraged by the fact that I'm not seeing any additional warnings immediately to our west. There's a little activity that's just to the southwest of uh, or southeast of Arkadelphia, well to the west of Shelby, Arkansas. But right now the main focus is in Memphis, Shelby County, where we spent most of the day dry, warm, humid. We hit a high temperature of 80 degrees today. Prior to that line moving in, temperatures were still in the mid 70s and there was plenty of fuel 
energy for these storms to regenerate. And that's why I think we saw that rapid intensification that still exists. So we're still dealing with the tornado warnings themselves. Let's take a look at both of them because we do have two, I do believe. We've got the tornado warning, one until 1245. We've got the severe thunderstorm warning also. Now, this is the 1245 polygon, but there's also a tornado warning here. Millington, you are under that. That is also now until 1245. So two active tornado warnings somewhat overlapping in the area and around the city of Memphis. Heavy rain is what we're getting here and I hear in Midtown right now, but we can certainly hear the wind as it was moving on through. And right now, taking a look at our next rad radar, this is what's coming down. So I'm sure people are losing power in the area. Hopefully your cell phones and tablets are fully charged before bed tonight and you're able to follow us there on our First Alert weather app or Action News 5 news app. If you lose power, you'll have that and you have our app, then you're able to watch and continue watching our coverage tonight through the overnight hours. It's been a long night. We've been on the air since about 6 and it continues. So we've got 17,000 MLGW customers without power right now. So 17,000, that's a big swath of the city. We'll work to see if we can get the MLGW map up for you in just a bit. Spencer, anything catching your eye right now? I'm looking at the heavier rain and the lightning. What about uh, rotation? Uh, not a whole lot of rotation. I'll switch this out behind me so you can see what I'm looking at and I'll give you a better view of this. I think there's still a lot of wind moving through parts of uh, eastern Shelby and now into parts of Fayette County where they have extended now a severe thunderstorm warning, big thunderstorm warning around this tornado warning. But Oakland, Griffin, Lambert, along I-40, back to Eads, that's where we're getting the strongest wind right now along Highway 64. Uh, some of the strongest winds that we're seeing. Hickory with uh, Donald Donaldson Drive uh, near Donaldson Elementary. All this just came through there. Uh, State Route 15, so that's Highway 64, then back toward uh, Seward Drive as well. But again, all of this wind is moving to the northeast, but in within this wind, I'm not seeing the rotation like I was earlier. I don't see that uh, as, uh, as well as I did earlier. So we just heard from Kelly Cook, who got word from a state trooper that a tornado was reported on I-40 near 28. So is that was that right, Meg? OK, so so I-40 near 28 and near Arlington. So we do have a report from a state trooper in the area that 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 there was a tornado there. So I think there was likely a very quick spin up, likely illuminated by lightning. We're not seeing any indication of a tornado on the ground right now, but at the same time, we can't rule it out. Now, the other thing we're dealing with is the amount of rainfall that is uh, around the area. Fortunately, the Millington radar is clear, so we ought to be getting a much better picture than we were a few minutes ago when that heavier rain was creating some attenuation. We couldn't see out as much. Let's see if now we can get a better idea of where the winds, the strongest winds may be occurring. Look at this. We're seeing some pretty significant wind right there around DeSoto and Shelby County near South Haven and in the White Haven area near the airport. I've not seen anything on the way of airport delays at this time, but we're also still looking at the potential for some significant rotation. Let me go in, take a look once again. Let's see what we can see. Looks like this to me. Looks like what Spencer was pointing out just moments ago. Straight line wind. I think that's wind moving in this direction right there along I-40. Now, we had reports of semis flipped over in eastern Arkansas on 55 as wind was moving through there. Should there be any high profile vehicles on the road tonight and strong winds moving through, there is a potential for that to occur as well. So we could be looking at not only the potential for flooding, tornadoes, but also traffic problems should there be any issues with high profile vehicles on the highway tonight. So this is moving on through the city of Memphis and Shelby County right now. 
Let me clear this out, show you the heavier rain, getting a nice break around the Shelby Forest area. You're in the clear. I think you're in good shape. South Memphis still dealing with heavy rainfall and some strong, severe storms. Tornado warning is now canceled. Severe thunderstorm warning will remain in effect. So evidently they have seen the rotation lift out, but I don't think we're out of the woods just yet. And uh, severe thunderstorm warning is going to remain until 1230 for about another two minutes. But we don't want to let our guard down too quickly because we were talking earlier about how this line is now entering a pretty ripe environment that's been relatively untouched throughout the day today. We saw a few stray showers in northeast Mississippi and that dotted West Tennessee. But right now there's still a lot of warmth and a lot of moisture that's in this area and some very strong winds. And with this activity coming on through at this time, well, that is entering an area where we could see more storms develop rapidly and even to the east of Memphis along and south of I-40 tonight. So I think we've still got a pretty significant hot spot for this area right here. Not the best drawing, but you get an idea of what I'm talking about. So along and south of I-40 tonight is where I believe the transition for the severe weather threat will continue as we get into the overnight hours. Now we're still watching storms back to the west. We put this into motion for you as it loops it to the east, showing it just really kind of becoming more linear and kind of following along the I-40 corridor path a little bit, just to the north and then to the south of it in eastern Arkansas. But this whole line will pass through the Action News 5 coverage area. We still have a tornado watch that remains in effect until 5 a.m. for eastern Arkansas, West Tennessee, and northern Mississippi. And by the way, that tornado watch was issued earlier and was to expire at 11 o'clock. These storms slowed in progression, and now this threat continues well into the early morning hours of Saturday. Winds around the area starting to shift west in Memphis at 25 miles per hour, but I think we'll see them return to more of a southwest flow within the next hour or so. And then we've got a due south wind in northern Mississippi and a pretty stout one at that at about 15 to 20, 25 miles per hour. That's continuing to bring in moisture and warm air into the area. The rain cool air in Memphis is now dry drop this to 65, but look at these temps in North Mississippi, even around Brownsville. We're finding temperatures in the low 70s there. So as these storms encounter that warmer air and those south winds, we could see more intensification and we could see the potential for more strong to severe storms. Future cast, pretty good handle on it. Storms are a little farther, slightly farther east, but I think it's got a good idea on how things are playing out between now and about one o'clock. And then as we get to around 3 a.m., I think we're going to find individual cells. It's the ones that are here in this northeastern Mississippi and south of I-40 in West Tennessee that I'm going to remain a bit concerned about until around 4 or 5 a.m. because I think those cells could be or could have the potential to produce isolated tornadoes or severe storms while the areas or the rainfall behind it will most likely contribute to the possibility of flash flooding giving that we're going to see heavier rain on top of a rain soaked area and that will continue to march off to the east coming on through and finally exiting by about seven or eight o'clock in the morning. Spencer, what are you looking at? You got the hail tracker going over there? Yeah, and I had a couple of reports from uh, friends in Bartlett. Uh, Tom Barker actually just sent me a, a message saying at least P to dime size hail in Bartlett. And I was looking at the hail tracker right now, and you can see all this purple indicates there is uh, likely some hail in some of those uh, storms that's rolling through. It's not large hail, but certainly uh, it will sound pretty loud against right, the cool. windows. So keep that in mind. And uh, again, we're looking at uh, high wind gusts with some of this as well, but uh, the hail threat, not a huge threat but something to keep in mind uh, as these storms roll through and I was looking at some of the winds as well I'll clear this off and uh, toggle on a few more of these winds uh, just east of Arlington this is about 700 feet up this is uh, pretty close to the uh, Millington radar site and you can see we're still seeing 50 to 55 mile per hour winds there so uh, we're still getting some pretty good wind as this is uh, moving into now parts of northern Fayette County and also into uh, southern Haywood County as well so if you are in the uh, Bradenary Galloway back to Hickory with 
This is along I-40, seeing some pretty strong winds right now. That's probably blowing some vehicles around, some of those high-profile vehicles around on the interstate. But most of that wind is now east of Shelby County, the strongest wind. And then we've got more uh, generic winds with these uh, thunderstorms. Still going to be some pretty good gusts here in Midtown, inside the 240 loop, back down to Graceland, and uh, along the uh, south side of the 240 loop, back down to Whitehaven as well. Pretty good uh, lightning show with this as well, Ron. We're seeing uh, some some intense lightning yeah, we on are. some of the cameras here. That wind has done a number on power too, Spencer. As a matter of fact, 19,000 MLGW customers without power. Let's show you the map. Look at this. Most of it inside the 240 loop. Can you see those red boxes there? That's where the strongest storms came through just moments ago. Even right there around Capable and Parkway Village, it looks like another red box there in southeastern uh, Shelby County. But inside the loop, Midtown, even uh, a little farther south, outside the loop, and that's where we're finding the more significant power outages. So there are 258 outages affecting 19,000 MLGW customers, just over 19,000 MLGW customers. So power, a major issue for many tonight. And that has been the case in eastern Arkansas as well. We've seen widespread power outages there. Stronger storms moved through earlier this evening. Right now, as we go back to our first alert Doppler radar, let's take a look. We've got two active severe thunderstorm warnings now, down from tornado warnings, but severe thunderstorm warnings. And as I've said before, and we saw happen tonight, a severe thunderstorm can produce a tornado with little or no warning. And that has certainly been the case. So Crittenden, Fayette, Haywood, Shelby under a severe thunderstorm warning now until 1 o'clock, 1 a.m. There's another one just to the southwest of that. This severe thunderstorm warning that is in place right now, that's for Crittenden, Lee, and St. Francis. That's until 1245. So we have two severe thunderstorm warnings in place all along this main line that's rapidly moving off to the east at about 50 to 60 miles per hour. One severe thunderstorm warning until 1245. This one for Shelby County, north and east until 1 a.m. And it's also got a lot of lightning in there. Let's go back to the lightning counter. I think I've already got the lightning counter up. Let's do it. Let's put that on there. Take a look. 232 strikes of lightning. That is, does not include the lightning strikes that are coming out of the storms back to the west, but another 174 strikes of lightning there. Just around the Memphis area, we're seeing about 54 strikes. Let me do another little pass on that. 68 strikes of lightning right there in Shelby County. So heavy rain, thunderstorms moving through. Active tornado warnings have now been canceled. Severe thunderstorm warnings continue to remain in place. We are not seeing anything in the way of significant wind or rotation inside the loop or around the city, but there are some stronger wind gusts out there as this system is moving on through tonight. So as we take another look at what's coming around the area, let's put the radar back on here. Let me show you the precipitation as it's moving on through. We'll march that off to the east. By the way, folks that are up here in northeastern Shelby County, Dyer County, you're in good shape. This is rainfall that's coming through. Where the focus for severe weather threat exists now is really northern or southern Haywood County, and right there primarily along the I-40 corridor. I think this precipitation is just going to kind of follow along in that area. That will move through Madison County, Jackson, Tennessee. Strong to severe storms are coming in your direction. As a matter of fact, already seeing a little activity starting to fire up there. Spencer, one of the things that's caught my eye about this, you know, these just lingered around eastern Arkansas for what seemed like forever earlier this evening. Mm -hmm. This line got to the river and boom, it's moving east quickly. Yeah, and I think that that front's going to move a little quicker as we go into the overnight hours. I mean, it's still going to take, uh, you know, probably another three or four hours before we can start to really wind this down. But compared to what it did earlier uh, with these storms, they were just kind of moving northeast and training over the same areas. Now there's a little movement to the entire line. Uh, I've been uh, seeing so many comments on Facebook and Twitter about these storms in Shelby County and uh, appreciate all the uh, good info that we're uh, getting from you uh, folks there. And uh, so far, I haven't seen too many damage reports uh, as of yet, uh, but we do have uh, 
still a, a pretty substantial wind event going on across not only Shelby County, but now it looks like uh, we have a new tornado warning, Ron. We have, uh, let's see here, this is for portions of northern Fayette County and southern sections of Haywood County. That's for this area right here. So new tornado warning that goes until 1 a.m. New tornado warning until 1 a.m. Actually, let's see, no, yeah, 1 a.m., that's right. So uh, again, this Where looks like straight line there? winds to me right now, but there could be some rotation within that uh, area there, uh, especially on the leading edge of it. And this is uh, for, and am I looking at this right? Let's make sure, yeah. Yeah, so this is for Fayette, Northern Fayette, and Southern Haywood County. So between Somerville, Mason, Tennessee, Stanton, and uh, stretching back almost to White Bull, Tennessee is uh, where we're seeing this. And this is the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw on this. This is going through the Lambert community right now through Oakland, and it's going to move north and east. And again, this is mainly high wind, but there could be some rotation within this area. So be sure and go to your safe place. Hang tight until this storm passes. Danceyville, Eurekaton, Willis, Fayette Corners, all those areas. We got Ron. another tornado warning just issued for Fayette County. Let's check it out. Let's go to our first alert Doppler radar. Let me show you. Spencer's right on top of it right there. There we go. By the way, those winds, they're going to take down trees. We've already had reports of multiple trees down here in the city of Memphis. We've got a tornado warning now for Crittenden, Fayette, Haywood, and Shelby. Or excuse me, this is the tornado warning. Let me get this off of here so I can, uh, so I can read this. Here we go. So we've got the tornado warning for Fayette, Hardeman, Haywood County. That's going to be in place until 1 a.m. Then we've got the severe thunderstorm warning. That is for Crittenden, Fayette, Haywood, and Shelby County. That is until 1 a.m. So Fayette and Haywood County, you have double warnings right now. You've got the tornado warning and the severe thunderstorm warning. So that's what we're looking at there. Let me get this off of here. Clear this out and let's take a close look and let's put some tracks on here, shall we? As so I zoom in just a little bit, here we go. A lot of lightning in there. Lightning is a big problem for us tonight. I want to move this over just a little bit so I can put an, an accurate track on here and I am going to track this from that leading edge. There we go. I think I see where that hook may actually be. I'll come back to that in just a moment. Let me give some folks a first alert on where this is going to be in the next few minutes. Woodland, 15 minutes away. Huntersville, 28 minutes away. We'll see that move into Jackson in 44 minutes. 63 minutes before it gets into Medan. 83 minutes before Union Cross. Lorray, 95 minutes away. It'll get into Lexington in 104 minutes. And then in just over two hours, it'll be moving into New Johnsonville. This is outside the Action News 5 coverage area, but those are some communities that are in the path of this possible tornado. Now let's go back. Let's take a close look at it because I think I see what the National Weather Service is looking at and issuing on. And I'm going to zoom in just a little tighter here, get you down as closely as we can. This is Fayette County, Hardeman County, McNary County. We have Shelby County right here. By the way, everybody in Shelby County, we're still under a severe thunderstorm warning, but the tornado threat now seems to have moved farther east, impacting Fayette, Hardeman, and Haywood County. So let's zoom in a little tighter, and then let's hit this with the scope. Let's take a look. Let's see if we can pick out the rotation in here. There we go. Look at this. Let me show you this. Right here at the very least, that's what Spencer was showing just a moment ago. That is straight line wind. That's coming down. You've got air coming out of the upper levels of the atmosphere. It hits that and it just rushes forward. This has the potential to take down trees and power. Somerville, that's coming your way. Let me put a track on that leading edge, all right? So that is gonna move into Somerville in 13 minutes. You are 13 minutes away from the most intense or the heaviest wind. Now, let me point something else out here because this is under a tornado warning. Let me go back to the scope once again. And let's show you this little area right here. And Spencer, feel free to uh, correct me or move me along, but I think right there southeast of Mason, that's where we could be seeing a little rotation. Uh, it looks like there's a little eddy of sorts. 
And if you've been with us tonight, we were talking about how this will move out. You, you get this wind coming out like this, and then it forces itself out. Well, when it does that, it creates these little eddies back behind it that can create a quick little spin up. And I think that's what we're seeing there. It's also possible you see something on the southern edge of that, but it's primarily a straight line wind event with these little quick spin ups that will develop. We call this a QLCS, a quasi linear convective system. And that is likely what is what's being produced tonight. Very quick, usually lasts a scan, maybe two scans. Not what we saw earlier tonight with the long track tornado that moved through Arkansas. And by the way, the tornado that did move through Arkansas, that did damage to three nursing homes tonight, that we know produced two fatalities at the very least, has traveled 366 miles from its inception in eastern Arkansas to just to the south of Louisville, Kentucky, before that cell finally fell apart. We're dealing now, fortunately, with nothing That's like tough. that, but a line of very strong and severe storms. But it is this tornado warning right now that we're watching very, very closely, and it is impacting northern Haywood County, or southern Haywood County, northern Fayette County, and the northwestern corner of Hardeman County. 24,000 MLGW customers without power now in Memphis and Shelby County. If you have not downloaded the First Alert weather app and put it on your smartphone, take two seconds. Do it right now. Go to your app store, search First Alert Weather, WMC. You're going to find the app. Should you lose power, you're going to be able to follow along our coverage right there on the First Alert Weather app right there in the palm of your hand. It's going to come in very, very handy. Also, folks who are in Hardeman County, northwestern Hardeman County, folks in Madison County, here's your first alert now to seek some shelter. Let's have a storm plan in place because this is going to move through you. This is going to be coming on through your area, northwest Hardeman, on through northern. It's already making its way through northern Fayette County right now, but Haywood County, southern Haywood County, and now moving on towards the Jackson area. You need to have a storm plan in place in the event of another spin up with this cell. Again, we still have the severe thunderstorm warning and the tornado warning. I'm also watching something else that's back behind this that I think could create some more problems here. This Looks like it may be another band of heavy wind. Let's take a look at that. What are we at? 30,000 MLGW customers without power. That number keeps going up. Reports of multiple trees down in the area as a result of the wind. I don't see anything in the way of significant turbulence right now, although where we have the tornado warning. Let me step out. Sometimes it won't work if I'm still in the frame. Let's see. You see these little areas in yellow? orange, red. Those are little areas of turbulence. There's a little bit around Fayette Corners. There's a little bit right there around Somerville. And when I put the scope on top of that, let's take a look. We're looking at velocity, by the way, okay? So the scope is velocity. It's wind. So where we're seeing these little areas of green and red coming together, there is some somewhat broad scale rotation, and you can even see it here. You get these little little spins in the air in the atmosphere, but then take that off and just put the spectrum width on there. That's where we're likely finding some damaging wind right there, just to the north of Somerville. I want to track that because let's just put a track on that little area right there. That's moving off to the northeast and for whatever reason it went in another direction. But heavier rainfall also a big issue tonight. It's coming down at about an inch and a half per hour. We're still getting heavy rain around Bartlett and Lakeland and Arlington. Look at this, just over two and a quarter inches per hour and very heavy rainfall just to the south of that. That's moving on through, just moved east of South Haven. It's starting to move towards Olive Branch right now. Let me uh, give you some info on that, and then we'll track it. Olive Branch, get ready. Spencer, I'm not sure if we've got our Olive Branch camera, but that's coming down anywhere from two and a quarter to two and a half inches per hour with the track on it. 
Let me track that heavier precipitation because that's moving off to the east. Nesbitt, you're getting heavy rain right now, about four minutes before it moves into Maywood, nine minutes before it gets into Olive Branch, 14 minutes away from Collierville, 23 minutes from Piperton, 27 minutes from Wolf River, 28 minutes before it moves into New Bethel, and it will get into Rossville in 33 minutes. This is moving very, very fast. So very heavy rain is what we are tracking there. Fortunately, not tracking tornadoes. But inside just to the north of that DeSoto County line, we do have a severe thunderstorm warning that remains in place right now. That's what we're looking at. Spencer, what are you looking at? I see you doing some uh, pretty cool moves on the Lynx radar. I think your batteries may be dead. Ah, uh, there we go. There and we go. The uh, circulation, it's almost dead. I'm going to switch those out in just a minute. But uh, the uh, circulation's not showing up as much. But I think the reason, and I think Ron pointed it out, you can tell on the uh, reflectivity where these okay. little uh, circulations okay. are near uh, your, your uh, let's see, that's near Danceyville right now. So that's basically near Danceyville and heading off to the north and east. So that's one of those circulations, one of those many we're watching there. But there's not a lot showing up in the velocity. That's the wind speed and the direction. So uh, we're not seeing a whole lot there. And when I look at this and uh, clear this off, you can see there's still some rounds of uh, wind. Not as much wind back here in portions of Shelby County. But right, like you said, Ron, rain is coming down. I looked at the Olive Branch camera and it's knocking on the door. It's actually dry on our Olive Branch camera right now, but just to the north and west, all you have to do is go up Highway 78 and boom, you run right into that wall of rain around the uh, Mineral Wells area. So uh, that's uh, really along Goodman Road. So just north of our camera on Goodman Road right now, you're seeing that heavy rain all the way back to Plum Point and the South Haven area. And again, we have that severe thunderstorm warning for uh, for portions of DeSoto County. That's a look right now, Ron, at that. DeSoto. That's look it. how dry it is there. Yeah. But then uh, the lightning's going on, and that rain is going to be moving in very quickly here in just a second. Yeah, it is, and it, you can really see the lightning firing up. It looks like there is uh, uh, some raindrops on the screen. There may be a little moisture condensation on the uh, protective cover of the camera itself, but precipitation, significant precipitation hasn't moved in yet, but it is on the way. And a new severe thunderstorm warning. Let's go back to the first alert Doppler radar right now. Check out these polygons as we take a look and let's go to the first alert Doppler. Oh, here I can advance forward on my computer. Ladarius, if you'll take my computer again, that was my bad. Let's uh, take a look once again. Here we go. So I've got severe thunderstorm warnings now that are have extended. Can you put me up? OK, here we go. I'm going to step out. Step back in. There we go. Let's put uh, some information back on here because we still got the tornado warning. It looks like they've tightened that polygon just a bit. Fayette, Hardeman, Haywood. That's going to be in place until 1 o'clock. Severe thunderstorm warning also accompanies that for Crittenden, Fayette, Haywood, and Shelby. Yes, Crittenden, Fayette, Haywood, and Shelby. And just to give you an idea, that extends from southern Crittenden County all the way here. So we've got this. That is one polygon. Now a new one that has just come in, and that is for Lee, Phillips, St. Francis, and Tunica County. That's going to be in place until 1.30. Another severe thunderstorm warning there. So this is what we're looking at right now. This is what we're working with. And training echoes. One heavy rainmaker right after the other. And that is going to also create the potential for flash flooding in this area along and south of the I-40 corridor. So any nighttime or early morning before sunrise travel could be a bit treacherous, especially given the fact that we're not finished with the rain yet. And there could be there will likely be more moving in behind this in the overnight hours, although I think it'll be light to moderate the most the heaviest and most intense now encountering the part of the coverage area that was still warm still unstable 
and still had a lot of moisture and fuel for these storms as they finally crossed the river and moved on in. So the one active tornado warning right now, let me zoom into that. Let's put another track on here. Let's get you some fresh information, some fresh data. That's approaching Jackson, Tennessee. I know that's outside our coverage area, but we still have a lot of folks in that area, and I want to give you your first alert on when to expect this. So that will move into Jackson in 33 minutes. In the meantime, it'll be in Woodland in two minutes, 14 minutes from Huntersville, 17 minutes from Adair, 30 minutes before it gets into three way. We'll see it move into Medina in about 38 minutes, 51 minutes before it gets into Lavinia and Blue Goose at about 60 minutes, so one hour away. But that's also going to be followed by another band of heavier precipitation that will come in just behind that. That's why the flooding potential remains so high. So Warren, four minutes away. Sunny Hill, 16 minutes. Fayette Corners, 26 minutes. 31 minutes before it gets into Woodland. Huntersville, 44 minutes. So you get that first round. Rain will slack up a little bit, and then boom, you get another heavy rainmaker and some strong gusting wind likely with it too. Uptonville in about 52 minutes, 61 minutes before it moves into Jackson, and it'll get into Roy in about 77 minutes. And you're also going to be dealing likely with the rainfall that's still to the southwest. So this activity is going to follow along in that same path. You're going to see more heavy rain that's back here in Tunica County, western DeSoto County, that's following in that path. Now, it may take a slightly more easter, easterly projection. That would bring more rain into Marshall County, Benton, Tippa County, a little farther east, but we are going to be dealing with that. Let's go back to the DeSoto County camera. This is in Olive Branch. Still not much of anything in the way of rain there. Ladarius, can you pop up our Midtown camera? Ladarius is our director tonight. And he's been doing a great job for us. Things are much more tranquil in Midtown. Just some rainfall across the area. Good news here in the city of Memphis, but the rain itself is not over yet. Something I want you to keep in mind. And there may continue to be a little hail falling also. Spencer, what are you looking at? Some heavy rainfall? I was, just, I was just watching, uh, Ron, this area here uh, south of Mariana. This is south of uh, Rondo around the uh, Marvel, Arkansas area. And uh, there is a little bit of a hook on this, and we want to kind of keep an eye on this area just west of Alexa, uh, Arkansas. This is heading toward Tunica. Uh, there is some at least uh, high winds. I'm getting some uh, some readings on here of close to 80 mile per hour winds. Now, this is pretty high up, so it's probably not that strong at the surface in this area, but certainly couldn't wouldn't be surprised if there's not some at least 60 mile per hour winds. They've got a severe thunderstorm warning on this one right now, but the something just to keep an eye on because again, uh, these these very southern end storms, I think well any of them really, but We'll have to keep an eye on these uh, these little areas here, and, and you can see there's another little area where there's a little bit of a notch there, and then as we go a little further to the north and east, uh, then you get into that cell that's the strongest right now on the leading edge of this line, and so uh, anywhere along this line, there still could be some little little weak uh, disturbances. Also some uh, storms firing up on the south side of Cahoma County right now, just south of Clarksdale. So this is right along, uh, this is in the Boone community, and uh, this is along Highway 49. So Highway 49 uh, just to the south of that and also to the south of uh, Highway 278 as well. And again, most of the activity is still up here uh, from uh, Fayette to Shelby to Soto and then back into portions of uh, Lee and Phillips counties as well. So, uh, Ron, we just have to kind of keep an eye on things here and uh, watch these storms closely. Again, that tornado warning, they still are uh, with that. It's uh, almost up in about four minutes, so we'll no longer have, if they expire that one, there will be no uh, tornado warnings uh, that we're tracking currently, and then we'll just uh, keep an eye on for more tornado warnings along this line. Yeah, it's we need this to wind down. Spencer and I have been on the air since four o'clock this afternoon. We started going wall to wall right around 6 p.m. this evening, and it really hasn't stopped since. The biggest area of damage was confined to northeastern Arkansas. We had a tornado, a confirmed tornado that did hit a nursing home in Monette, Arkansas. There have been reports of fatalities and injuries. There was also another tornado near Turrell, Arkansas that hit 
two nursing home facilities and just to our north, we had reports tonight of a tornado striking an Amazon factory or an Amazon distribution location in the St. Louis area. And video coming out of there shows it pretty much leveled and there were reports of people trapped in the building. It has been a very, very treacherous night of weather, not only here in the Mid-South, but across the middle Mississippi River Valley and the Ohio Valley. And those storms continue tonight. This, I believe, is a lot. Is this a live video? Or is this OK? So this is video of the Amazon facility just outside of the St. Louis area. It is in Illinois on the other side of the river, but there were walls where you see those steel beams and now nothing more than the frame of the structure and barely that. So our thoughts and prayers to everyone there. Everyone here in the mid south who's been impacted tonight, those in Monette at the nursing home and in Turrell, Arkansas, at the two nursing homes there. I do have a feeling that tomorrow morning when the sun comes up and we're able to get out and survey all the storms that have moved through the area, we are going to find some significant damage in the mid south by tomorrow morning. So that includes the Action News 5 coverage area and a good portion, again, of northeast Arkansas and northwest Tennessee. And as I mentioned earlier, we had a tornado that, uh, a thunderstorm that uh, originated just outside our coverage area. It produced a tornado just around 530, and it continued to produce a tornado, the one we believe that struck the nursing home in Monette. But it continued, and it didn't die until it got just outside of Louisville, Kentucky. That cell traveled 366 miles and tornadoed for the majority of the time that it traveled through a four state area. So devastating tonight, absolutely devastating. And again, as the sun comes up tomorrow, we can get out, look at the damage. And then, of course, we'll be bringing you reports on Action News 5. So right now, we're still dealing with this line of severe thunderstorms. And this is it, really. This is the main edge of it right here. Let me put some features on here. We'll run through one more time. Uh, for whatever reason, I can't get back to my home view. Let's see. I may have overworked my radar tonight, I do believe. Spencer, I'm going to ask you to save me for a minute while I step out and uh, reset. All right, Ron. Yeah, we're still uh, looking at uh, storms across the area. I was just actually going through some of the data and uh, we're looking at the severe storms out there and still severe thunderstorm warnings. It looks like they've uh, canceled or let that uh, tornado warning expired. So as of 1 a.m. on Saturday morning, uh, December the 11th, I almost had to look and see what the date was. Uh, it is, we are tornado warning free as of right now. Now that may change uh, here in the next little bit if these storms continue to fire up or uh, continue to strengthen a little more on the south end of this. I think North Mississippi, you'll be the ones that see the best chance or the highest chance for still a couple of brief tornado warnings as uh, these cells move on through. But for uh, areas along and north of I-40, I think the severe threat is certainly winding down. So if you're in, uh, and, I, and I'll just circle some areas here, if you're in any of these areas that I'm circling right now, I think your severe threat is much, much lower. In fact, uh, the, the watch is expiring in, in those areas and uh, you should be okay. So pretty much all clear for Jonesboro, Harrisburg, those areas, especially along I-55 north of Memphis. But if you're south and east of Memphis, you're still going to deal with uh, some storms and maybe some uh, future warnings here in the next couple of hours, uh, but especially severe thunderstorm warnings. I think that's going to be the main issue with high winds and heavy rain and intense lightning with this as well. Ron, I was, wa I was looking for that storm that traveled uh, from uh, near Searcy, Arkansas, and it still is producing a tornado at this hour between, right now between uh, Louisville and Lexington. It is still producing now. It has weakened some in between and I, I noticed they did let some of the warnings expire for it, but that same cell that produced so much damage in uh, parts mm. of, of Arkansas and, and our specific viewing area 
still going on at this hour when it started at almost six o'clock this evening. Let me show you some damage video from Missouri, Spencer. I think that cell may have been responsible for. We're going to bring that up for a moment. In the meantime, we still have a tornado watch in effect for eastern Arkansas, West Tennessee, North Mississippi. That's going to be in place until 5 a.m. Now, it does include Memphis and Shelby County. We're not out of the woods yet with tornadoes. And that area that Spencer was pointing out southeast of that line is where the threat for strong to severe storms still exists. Do we have that? Do we have that? Let's let's take a look at those images or that video of damage. This was coming to us tonight. This was from uh, Malia. Can you tell me once again where was the location on this? Do we have the specific? This is from Missouri, so right around Carothersville. This is near um, Chandler Hill Vineyards, Defiance Ridge. St. Charles County, Missouri. So it's outside our coverage area, but we believe this was likely due to that same cell that moved through northeastern Arkansas, the one that traveled for more than 350 miles. I cannot recall in my many years of doing weather here in the Mid-South having a tornado or a cell that tornadoed that long and that far absolutely amazing. So here's what we're working with right now. We still have the tornado watch in effect. I wanted to take a look at winds right now. They're starting to take more of a southwesterly component. They'll ultimately shift to the northwest once the cold front that brings all of this in. And you may be able to see, see that little area right there that's blue. It's in the top left hand corner of your screen right by the first alert weather app uh, or first alert logo. That's cold air. That's moving in our direction, and that will be here within the next few hours. But we still have very warm air that's here. I think we've got a more homogenous air mass now from Memphis north into Blyfield, Dyersburg, and into Wynn. So I think you're going to be seeing nothing more than just some rain followed by falling temperatures. But where we still have temperatures that are in the low to mid 70s along and south of I-40, there's still going to be the potential for more strong to severe storms. Future cast looking like this right around one o'clock. It's got a pretty good handle on it, although that line is a little more in this direction. So this portion of it down just a little more, but it's got a good handle on how things are playing out and how it should continue to play out between now and about three o'clock. I think as we get to 3 a.m., we're going to see a greater threat for strong to severe storms in northeast Mississippi. And then these areas right here, right around McNary, maybe even into Hardeman County and Hardin County, right around uh, Pickwick, we could find some severe storms there, possibly isolated tornadoes as well. But then we're going to have some heavier rain that will move on into North Mississippi. And I think by the time we get to four or five o'clock in the morning, the threat then is going to be more for a flash flooding event and heavy rainfall, maybe some small hail embedded in there, but it should be moving out rather quickly. And by eight o'clock in the morning, we're going to find temperatures in the 40s. They're going to continue to fall through the day and will likely be in the 40s all across the Mid-South by tomorrow afternoon. So get ready for a dry day, but a cold one tomorrow. In the meantime, severe thunderstorm warnings continue to linger across the Action News 5 coverage area as I take a look at what's going on here. And I think, Spencer, I think I'm going to need your help on this because I do believe I need to reset my computer completely. If I could have you jump in and just... One second. While yeah. I... Uh, shut this down and start it all over again. We have overworked the first alert Doppler <laughs> radar tonight. Yeah, I think uh, it's not used to uh, doing this much for this long of a period of time. And that's, you know, that's part of uh, the secondary severe weather season that we have here in the mid south. You know, we have our main severe weather season in the spring, but this is not that unusual to see uh, this time of the year. And you can see those severe thunderstorm warnings are still going on this evening as we have now passed 1 a.m. I want to show you uh, the uh, leading edge of this is heading toward Bolivar. I've had some folks asking about Bolivar on uh, social media tonight. And uh, well, that's where some of the strongest wind is heading right now. So this uh, storm is bowing out around Somerville. There might be some small hail as well uh, along and north of Highway 64 just to the west of Somerville. I'll, I'll zoom in a little tighter so I can uh, give you fo folks an idea there. This is uh, around the Feathers Chapel community. This is just north of Oakland uh, around the Powers community as well. Fewer along uh, State Highway 76 uh, where it intersects Highway 64. 
then uh, you just need to be aware that uh, heavy uh, rain and of course uh, large hail possible and maybe even some damaging winds. I think there's definitely some high wind going through Somerville right now and uh, you can see let me put the uh, storm relative velocity I think it's it looks like it's uh, not catching up. Some of the data is not lining up right now, but that's that's a look at the uh, live radar uh, as of right now, as of 107 uh, a.m. And you can see uh, that strong those strong storms extend toward Whiteville, still back toward Germantown, still back into portions of Shelby County, Walls, Mississippi, Highway 61 around Tunica and then back toward Mariana as well. But I'm not seeing the good news is, Ron, we're not seeing any signs of uh, even weak rotation with this right now. I'll take a quick look at the velocity one more time. There might be something here. Don't you Lexa. jinx us. Uh, there, what's that? <laughs> I said, don't you jinx us. Yeah, don't jinx. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there is a little <laughs> little rotation there near Lexa. We'll keep an eye on that. But again, there's no tornado warnings, just severe thunderstorm warnings. But there still could be some of those high winds moving on through. But uh, the good news is uh, for the folks in North Mississippi, this is not looking as bad as it was earlier. Unfortunately, for the folks in eastern Arkansas, and of course, uh, we're going to find out a lot more about that. Uh, come daylight in the early morning hours. Yeah, and, but we cannot let our guard down just yet. None of us can. For those of you at home here in our studios at 1960 Union Avenue, we're going to follow this until it exits the coverage area because there is still the possibility that we could see some additional spin ups or strong to severe storms in this area right here. So we want to watch that closely. Power is a big problem around the Action News 5 coverage area from northeast Arkansas, even into Memphis. Take a look at the MLGW power outage map. We now have 391 outages affecting 20,742 MLGW customers. It looks like a big part of it's inside the 240 loop right around uh, Parkway Village, southeastern uh, uh, Shelby County, maybe around Hickory Hill area. So it looks like some very uh, some widespread power outages from storms that came through earlier tonight. Now from storms that came through earlier tonight in northeast Arkansas, let me show you damage. This is recovery efforts from a nursing home in Monette, Arkansas. At least one dead after a tornado ripped through northeastern Arkansas. We were getting reports earlier of two fatalities, but we know for certain for certain of at least one. Notice the building. The roof is gone. There were also multiple reports of injuries. You can see the first responders on the scene there working diligently to just help as many people as they possibly can and get folks to shelter. The sad part about that was right after that tornado hit, recovery efforts began. Another tornado warning was issued for Crittenden County or Craighead County and Monette. So while they were in the process of rescuing people, another tornado warning underway. The images coming out of there, just heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. And I have a feeling when the sun comes up tomorrow, even more shocking. We will have crews out in that area bright and early tomorrow morning and through the afternoon. We'll bring you reports on Action News 5 tomorrow morning and through into the afternoon at 5 and 6 and 10 tomorrow. So I invite you to join us for that. In the meantime, we're tracking these storms until they exit. We're at 1 11 a.m. We've been tracking storms since about 4 this afternoon and it continues across the Mid-South right now. Heaviest area of precipitation is Looks like it's still continuing right there around oh northeastern um, Arkansas or north northwest Tennessee. Excuse me. Now moving into the Jackson area. There's that little well-defined area that was around Jackson, but I'm seeing a little bit of a somewhat of a Boeing echo in there. Let's zoom out just a little bit. I want to see if I can identify some areas of more intense wind and the higher wind speeds. I don't necessarily see that, but I will point out some areas where we could find it right here, right there along that line from Somerville 
all the way just to the east of Bolivar. And again, we do have the tornado, the severe thunderstorm warning that remains in effect there. As a matter of fact, Madison County under a severe thunderstorm warning. We've got the one for Fayette, Hardeman and Shelby County. That's going to go for about another 18 minutes before expiring at 1:30. So there's also been some hail along I-40, and as we pan back just a little bit, looks like some pretty significant hail inside uh, the city of Memphis and Shelby County. Give you an idea of the size on this. Let's check it out. Eastern Fayette County, just under half an inch. Inside the 240 loop, right around three quarters of an inch. Right there in southeastern Shelby County, just over half an inch as well. And some hail around the downtown area just over half an inch. But taking a look at the big picture as we zoom out, there was large swaths of hail in northeast Arkansas tonight and even more hail just south of I-40. I think I'm only going back a couple of hours on this, so we're not looking at all the hail info for the entire night. But there's still a lot of rain. That's got a ways before it moves on out of the coverage area. Let's put some tracks on this and give you an idea of what's where and where things are going. We still have the active severe thunderstorm warning that is in place for southeastern Shelby County. We're going to stay with you until that one expires, but that is for southeast Shelby County, and that is going to remain in place for Fayette, Hardeman, Shelby until 1:30. So we've got a few minutes here. Let's put some tracks up. And let's give you an idea of where these storms are going and who's going to be impacted next by what is moving through right now. I'm going to start down here in northwest Mississippi, and we're going to work our way to the north and east. So we've got a line of storms here. Severe thunderstorm warning right now. This is in place for Lee, Phillips, also St. Francis, Tunica County. That is until 1.30. So severe thunderstorm warning there. Now, as we put a track on this, give you an idea where that's going to go over the next few minutes. Really weird, kind of difficult to track these because they are kind of going a little to the south, but they're also moving to the east and northeast. So, yeah, that whole line is pushing south, but it wants to move in this direction, if that makes any sense at all. Now, it's two minutes away from Marvell, so about two minutes before some heavy rain moves in there, about 39 minutes before it moves into West Helena. Helena, 46 minutes away, 63 minutes from Trinity, 90 minutes from Hernando, cold water, 109 minutes away. We'll see it get into the Wolf River area, 109 minutes, and just over two hours before it moves into Bihalia. So that is that portion of the line. There's heavier rain back behind that that will follow. Then we've got this area right here around the city of Memphis, and we still have the uh, severe thunderstorm warning there for Shelby County that will be in place until 1.30. Let's put a track on that, and I do want to kind of bring it a bit to the east, southeast a bit. So Collierville, four minutes away from getting some very heavy rain. You're likely going to get some strong gusting wind and intense lightning. Bolivar, 25 minutes, 54 minutes from Finger, 77 minutes from Selmer, Savannah, 105 minutes. We'll see it get into Clifton in just under two hours, just over two hours before it moves into Nixon, and it will move into Collinswood in just under three hours. So very slow moving, but it is moving in that direction. And then... As we take a look at this portion of the line that is just about to move out of our coverage area, that's going to exit Jackson. That'll push into the Tennessee River Valley and should be out of the area, followed by what looks like just some heavy rain. I think the better chance for the stronger severe storms, the possibility for additional warnings, is going to fall in this area right here. And I don't know why that did that. Let's do it again. So it's going to fall in this area right here. That's where we're likely to see additional warnings. So, Quitman County, Cahoma, Panola, Tate, Marshall, Lafayette, Benton, Tippa, Alcorn counties. I want you to remain weather aware. There's your first alert to approaching storms and the potential for more strong to severe storms that will be moving through before the early morning hours and by the time all this finally moves on out. Spencer, what are you looking at?
Still looking at uh, the rain rates, uh, Ron, because that seems to be one of the bigger stories now. We're transitioning again uh, from uh, the big tornado threat into the uh, heavy rain and the wind, and that's going to be uh, the story. But this is around Fayette County right now, so we're not forgetting about you folks there in uh, uh, Fayette County and then stretching into portions of uh, McNary and Hardeman counties as well, especially around Hardeman County. You're going to see a lot of that moving in, but four to eight inch rain rate uh, right, right now. So we're talking about that's how fast it's coming down at four to eight inches an hour. So this is uh, some very heavy rainfall, still 111 lightning strikes with all this as well. And you can see as we uh, go down to the south of this, some of that heaviest rain is still around Capelville, Dean's Quarter, uh, Banks, uh, down toward Highway 61, and then into eastern Arkansas as well. But that's uh, certainly the secondary, at least right now, threat along with those uh, strong Longer wind gusts. You can see these uh, severe thunderstorm warnings continue. Uh, the one for portions of Fayette County goes until 1:30 a.m. So another uh, 13 minutes on that. Uh, if you're in Walls, Mississippi, a uh, small portion of northern DeSoto County through 1:30 a.m. And then of course uh, these areas of eastern Arkansas until 1:30 a.m. as well. But uh, the good news is, and let me switch back over to the Memphis next rad here real quick because I am on. On, uh, let's see, there it is right there. And yeah, it, the good news is I'm not seeing any of these uh, small circulations like we were earlier. Uh, we were seeing uh, just one right after the other, uh, really coming out of eastern Arkansas into Shelby County, and they kind of fired back up. And now the small circulations are certainly uh, less numerous. Not to say that they won't still uh, pop up and not to say that we couldn't see a couple more tornado warnings. It's still a possibility. There's still a tornado watch in effect. But if you're in these areas right now, heavy rain, intense lightning, 233 lightning strikes. So Mariana to Hernando to Olive Branch, Collierville, all the way back to uh, portions of southern Tennessee, Somerville and Whiteville, heading toward Bolivar. If you're along Highway 72, this is all heading your way in North Mississippi. So really uh, from uh, the uh, early Grove area, Sladen, all the way over to uh, Walnut and Corinth, this is all heading your way. You're going to get heavy rain, some high winds, and some intense lightning as well. But uh, right now, Ron, things look uh, at least uh, better as far as the tornado threat is concerned. That's good. Uh, and Spencer, let me share some uh, not so good news with you tonight. We do have five confirmed tornadoes within our, our area, two confirmed in eastern Arkansas at nursing homes, two separate nursing homes. And then we have confirmation of three additional fatalities in Lake and Obion counties from two separate tornadoes. So Lake and Obion are counties in northwest Tennessee, just to the north of Dyersburg that border Kentucky. So tonight, just within our regional area, we have confirmation of five fatalities and rescuers still on the scene of several several uh, other areas where there was significant damage tonight. That is not to mention also the uh, Amazon factory that was hit hard in Illinois just across the river from St. Louis. That facility pretty much leveled and rescuers working there tonight and I'm sure they will work around the clock until everyone is accounted for there. So right now our first alert Doppler radar looking a little better. It is 120. We've got about another 10 minutes before most of these severe thunderstorm warning expire. This is moving off to the east pretty quickly. We put this into motion for you and you can see it's just kind of spreading out to the east. I do think we could see some intensification as that approaches the Tennessee River Valley, but that's going to take that out of our coverage area. These showers starting to pop up ahead of this main line that may zap a little bit of the energy here in northeast Mississippi, but we do have a convergence of moisture that's coming on through and that's going to be followed by a pretty significant cold front that may trigger a few more showers, but I think primarily just rainfall. Our hail tracker showing a swath of hail across the area, primarily right around the city of Memphis and on through Shelby County. We still have the tornado watch in effect until 5 a.m. Memphis and Shelby County continue to be included in that, although I think our uh, threat for tornadoes here in the city is pretty much over. It's rain that we're dealing with now and the potential for flash flooding. As I mentioned earlier, if you are going to be traveling before sunrise, 
please use extreme caution in the area. There could be flash flooding on some of the secondary roads in the area. And with the heavier rain falling, we could deal with additional flash flooding as we approach sunrise. Winds now starting to make a more of a westerly shift in northeastern Arkansas, but still generally out of the south southwest across much of the coverage area tonight. And the strong storms still continue to work their way through the mid south. We pretty much tracked all of this, but we're still seeing a lot of activity that remains and right around the Memphis Metro as we Zoom in a little tighter right now. I do believe Collierville still under the severe thunderstorm warning. So Collierville portion of Germantown still under the severe thunderstorm warning, but most of Shelby County and as a matter of fact, the vast majority of Shelby County is now pretty much in the clear. And once that heavier line or that heavier band pushes east and southeast of you, you're going to be in good shape. Those of us in Midtown right now inside the 240 loop, much calmer pattern emerging, just a few showers moving in from back behind. But that's what we're looking at right now. A look at the big picture showing rain still falling across a good portion of Arkansas, but we're not seeing anything in the way of severe weather here. A lot of MLGW customers still without power. I believe we're up to 25,000 MLGW customers now without power. And this just being handed to me. Um, we've got, uh, this was on Memphis News Lady Joyce Peterson's Twitter account. A city of West Memphis spokesperson says the West Memphis, Arkansas Fire Department sent 10 people, 10 of their members to help out in storm ravaged Truman in Poinsett County, Arkansas. So a big heartfelt thanks to all the first responders who are uh, working diligently overnight tonight in the recovery efforts there and our hopes and prayers for the best outcome for those areas and everyone involved. But again, just to recap, five confirmed fatalities within our vicinity two in Arkansas, three in Lake and Obion County. So we will have more on that, of course, on Action News 5 tomorrow morning, starting bright and early. I do believe we go on at 6 a.m. And meteorologist uh, Brittany Bryant and Aaron Thomas will be along with information and a recap of what to expect. I can tell you a much calmer pattern is coming our way for the rest of the weekend, albeit a much cooler one as well. But right now, we have, it is 124. We still have how many uh, severe thunderstorm warnings? We've got the one for Madison County that's working until 145. That's for Fayette, Gibson, Haywood, and Madison. Then we have another for Fayette, Hardeman, and Shelby until 130. We've got another one just to the southwest of that for Fayette, Hardeman, and Shelby. That's the same one, I do believe. And then there is one that's back here for Lee, Phillips, St. Francis, and Tunica counties. That is in place until 130. As a matter of fact, on the link, Spencer has a much better view of it. Spencer, can you, yeah, let's take that links real quick and let me show you those tornado, those severe thunderstorm warnings. You get a better idea of them. So we got one, two, three, four that are in place right now. And you can see the radar data now interspersed with that. Heavier rain back behind that, but just rain, nothing severe. Spencer, any final thoughts? No, Ron, I think uh, I think we're entering a period where things are going to be a little bit calmer. Hopefully keep your fingers crossed. But uh, the good news is, uh, again, these storms not as active at least as they were earlier and uh, fortunately we have not had as many tornado warnings over the past uh, few hours but of course I know you guys are going to be up watching this for the uh, rest of the evening or the morning hours I guess we say evening because we've been here for so long but uh, I think uh, we're Spencer's in, day started at noon by the way yeah I think so. we're in good shape now I think I think we're in good shape but uh, like you said you can't keep, let your guard down because there could still be one or two of those rogue tornado warnings with uh, spin up tornado Tornado, the, the atmosphere is still unstable, so uh, we'll keep monitoring that throughout the night. Our newsroom is still active tonight, still busy. We've got reporters that are out in the field gathering information, bringing in stories for us on this damage, gathering video. We'll put that all together. We'll have it for you and present it bright and early tomorrow morning. I encourage you to join us then to find out more about what transpired today, the areas that were impacted the hardest, and We'll talk more about, um, well, some of the other 
areas that were impacted outside the Action News 5 coverage area, particularly that Amazon hub that was in uh, Illinois. Um, Malia, our producer, tells me we have some new video. Malia, what is this video? Let's pop it up and tell me what it is. Uh, the Amazon collapse. So this is, uh, this is video from that area. This was an Amazon warehouse, a distribution facility just east of St. Louis across the Mississippi River in Illinois. It basically collapsed. The entire facility basically collapsed. And that's what we are looking at tonight. First responders working to recover employees who were in the building at the time. We had reports at one point of 150 people trapped inside and recovery efforts there continue. We've had no reports of fatalities there, but again, information is still coming in to us tonight, but it has been very active all across the middle Mississippi River Valley into the Ohio Valley and here in the Mid-South, a tornado that traveled more than 360 miles, a long track tornado originated in Searcy, Arkansas, cut right through Poinsett, Craighead, Mississippi, a portion of Dyer County, and then in through Western Kentucky, Missouri Boot Hill, touching on four states. And at last check, it was still going. So it is a long night indeed. But for us here in the Mid-South, it is looking a bit more tranquil. Once we get these severe thunderstorm warnings out of here, I think we're going to be dealing primarily with just rainfall. But I still want to watch this area closely. If you're in northern Mississippi and you're going to bed, make sure you have your weather radio on with fresh batteries and the volume up. If you have the first alert weather app on your smartphone, make sure that you have the volume up on your phone so that any warnings that are issued, you will hear them and you will be alerted because should additional tornado warnings be issued, we want to make sure that you hear them, you get out of bed and you get to the safest place in your home and make sure everyone in your family knows where to go as well. But right now, taking a look, Memphis, Shelby County, let me zoom in just a little tighter. We've still got that heavy rain coming down right there around Collierville. Still coming down inside right around DeSoto County, right there around the 269 loop. That's what we are looking at here. Heavy rainfall, but it is not severe. And inside the 240 loop, even a little break right now from the rainfall. So just some light showers, but there is still more to come. And it's going to be a, a little bit before this finally moves out. I think we'll see it gone from the area right around 6, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. So we're going to continue to watch this. We'll keep you updated. Again, 25,000 MLGW customers without power, but you can count on MLGW crews out in the field right now to restore it. You know, they're that good, and we appreciate their we appreciate their help. Let me leave you with this. If you don't have the app, Scan that QR code. Do it right now. Get the one for your Android or your iPhone. Either one of those cords, iPhone's on the right, the Android's on the left. Scan that, put that First Alert Weather app on your smartphone. You'll be good to go and you'll be able to sleep well tonight and know that we are watching out for you. So. On behalf of meteorologist Spencer Denton and the rest of the WMC Action News 5 crew, to Malia Carruthers in the booth and Ladarius, our director, thank you. And thank you all at home for watching tonight. Spencer, great job as always, my friend. It's you an too. absolute honor to work with you. He's one of the best severe weather guys in this area. So we're very fortunate to have him here. Everybody, sleep safe tonight and know that we're not going to bed until this moves out. We're watching it for you. I'm meteorologist Ron Childers. Have a good night.